Hello and welcome to the next tutorial about PrePowMix. This time I will show you how to perform a nonlinear backlink analysis. Let's create a new model first. This will be a 3D model space and default unit system. And now, as always, I will import the model. Uh, so this will be the model right here. And you can see that it's a shell model, mm, a cylindrical shell actually. Uh, modeling it in FreeCAD is really easy. You just have to create a sketch of a circle and then extrude it using a part module because uh, this module can extrude also uh, surfaces. Uh, so that's how this um, model was created in FreeCAD. Uh, and now uh, I will define uh, meshing parameters uh, for this first analysis because we will carry out uh, two analyses. The first one will be linear backlink and the second one will be nonlinear backlink. Uh, but I will describe the rest, the rest later on. Uh, so let's change the maximum element size to 7 millimeters. I also change uh, quad dominated mesh to yes uh, because we want quad elements here. Uh, and I will leave the rest uh, with default settings apart from, from the second order, which I will set to no. Uh, we'll use uh, first order uh, quad elements in this case. So let's confirm this. Mm, and now I will create the mesh. The mesh is now created. You can see that the quad elements were created over the whole uh, cylinder. Uh, with this quad dominated algorithm, uh, sometimes triangular elements are also generated, so we have to check uh, if, if this is the case. And uh, if this happens uh, because of the way this algorithm works, um, you can uh, try different uh, element size. But in this case, you can see that we have just uh, uh, quad elements. Uh, we can also check the element type uh, right here. So let's um, let's uh, proceed to uh, set up. Uh, I will create a new material. Uh, this time it will be aluminum, uh, not steel like we usually do use. Uh, so let's define uh, aluminum, and I will specify uh, uh, Young's modulus for this material, and also uh, Poisson's uh, ratio. Let's confirm this, mm, and now I have to create a section. Uh, I will, of course, use the shell section, and I will assign this to, to the model, and I will specify the thickness of 2 millimeters, and material is already uh, assigned because this is the only material we have in this model. So let's confirm this, mm, and now I have a section assigned, and I can proceed to step setup. Uh, so mm, let's create a new analysis step. Uh, this will be a buckle step for the linear backlink analysis. We use the eigenvalue backlink analysis step. Uh, when it comes to settings, uh, I will leave number of backlink factors uh, as one, uh, default setting. Uh, normally you would be interested also in uh, other, uh, in more um, backlink um, mode shapes. Uh, you, would, you should request more of them, uh, especially for imperfection sensitive uh, structures like shells, uh, where mm, eigenvalues can be closely spaced. Uh, but in this case, mm, for this tutorial, I'll just request one uh, eigenvalue and you will see uh, later on what we will do with this uh, mode shape. Uh, I will also change the accuracy uh, from the default setting. Uh, I'll specify a uh, much uh, lower uh, value. So let's uh, confirm this. And now I have to define, of course, boundary conditions. Uh, so uh, let's choose fixed uh, for this bottom edge here. Uh, and I will confirm this and create another boundary condition uh, applied to the top edge and I will constrain everything uh, apart from, uh, from this actual direction which will apply load. Uh, when it comes to boundary conditions for such a, for a problem like this, uh, backlink of, of a cylindrical shell uh, subjected to actual uh, load uh, compression, and boundary conditions are really important. The structure is really, really sensitive, uh, results uh, depend on boundary conditions a lot. Uh, I chose th those boundary conditions, you can try with different ones, um, it's a matter of, of testing. Uh, you could also use uh, rigid body constraint to apply mm, boundary conditions, this way it would be also easier to uh, measure um, the variables that we will later need for, for the equilibrium path plot, uh, but uh, it's also fine to, to use it this way, rigid body constraint may uh, introduce some additional mm, issues with accuracy, with the results, you can see that they can be affected by the presence of the rigid body constraint applied to the edges of the shell. Uh, remember that shells in Calculix are expanded to solids, so those are not uh, typical shells uh, you can, that, that you can find normally in other software, so you have to be really careful when it comes to, to applying constraints to, to shells, uh, especially in, in backlink analysis.
Uh, all right, mm, so uh, I have everything defined. Uh, I specified all boundary conditions and I just have to specify the load uh, for, for this backlink analysis. So mm, I will select surface traction and I will apply this load uh, also to the top edge and I will specify a value of one. And this will be unit load. Uh, this way we obtain the backlink factor that will be equal to the backlink load. We won't have to multiply anything. Uh, so so that's the advantage of, of using uh, unit load for linear backlink analysis. All right, uh, just one more thing. Mm, I will go to uh, field output and element results. And here I will select uh, two dimensional output. Uh, this way uh, the shells won't be expanded in results to solids and we'll be able to uh, export the deformed shape uh, properly. Uh, you'll see this later. Uh, so mm, for now mm, everything is uh, prepared and uh, I can submit the analysis. The analysis uh, is already finished, I can check the results. So let's uh, open them and uh, let's take a look at uh, the values that we obtained. We are interested in this backlink factor and we can compare it with analytical solution. Uh, here's the analytical solution from uh, Timoshenko's um, classic book about uh, elastic stability. And uh, here's the value that we expect um, according to the analytical solution. And you can see that it's really close to mm, what we got from this uh, mm, simulation uh, linear backlink analysis. Uh, that we performed uh, in Prepomex. Mm, you can see the backlink factor here. Uh, remember that we applied unit load, so uh, we don't have to multiply this backlink factor by the load. Uh, this is just the, the backlink force that, that we expect. Uh, all right, so that's the, the linear part, uh, linear analysis. Mm, and now we'll proceed to uh, the most interesting part, which is nonlinear backlink analysis. And for this purpose, we'll use uh, scaled uh, mold shape, or first mold shape, because we only re requested this one. A scaled uh, first mold shape mm, of linear backlink, we will use, the, we will use it as imperfection for nonlinear backlink analysis. And uh, to do this, uh, I have to specify the scale factor by uh, using us choosing user defined so here. And now in this field, I can specify the value uh, for this uh, factor. And here you will see that it was updated. And now uh, this is the basically the deformation scale factor that you use to, to scale the deformation and um, for visualization purposes mainly. Uh, but in this case, it will also serve as uh, in scaling factor for, for the imperfection. Uh, so this this uh, scales the, the visualization. Uh, if you, for example, if you use larger uh, value like this, you can see mm, the imperfections um, are w way more visible. Uh, but uh, for for nonlinear backlink analysis, we use uh, this value of uh, 200. All right. So now, uh, what we have to do uh, is go to File, uh, Export, and we have to choose the formed mesh, the formed mesh in input file format. And uh, now I will uh, export this mm, to, let's say, imperfection. Uh, I also mm, specify the, the factor uh, so that we know uh, which factor was applied and I will save this. And uh, that's why we also mm, had to select uh, 2D uh, output because otherwise and this uh, shall be expanded to solid and uh, we would get uh, solid elements as a result in this exported input file. Uh, so to get shell elements in, in this exported file, we have to select to the output for this uh, linear backlink analysis. All right, mm, that's the first part. And now I'll go back to FE model tab and uh, I will use the same model. Uh, I will just uh, delete the, the unnecessary definitions. And uh, in the same model, I will uh, define linear backlink analysis. So let's delete this step uh, because uh, we'll uh, define a new one. Uh, and uh, I will this time define a static step. Mm, it will be a step with geometric nonlinearity turned on. This is very important for nonlinear backlink analysis. Uh, and uh, then I can also uh, specify incrementation settings uh, because this will be nonlinear analysis and uh, there can be some convergence di difficulties. So it's, it's uh, good to mm, check the incrementation settings. Uh, I can, for example, increase the maximum number of increments and I can also uh, decrease the initial time increment to, to make it easier for the solver to, to start uh, uh, calculations. All right, so mm, I can confirm this. And uh, now uh, let's proceed to the rest of the setup. Uh, before I go to the boundary conditions, uh, I will just uh, change one more thing in, in uh, model uh, data. Uh, I will go to the material mm, and uh, now I will add plasticity for this material because uh, we'll uh, account for uh, plastic deformation uh, in this nonlinear backlink analysis. Uh, so I'll specify mm, plasticity data for aluminum. 
Uh, I will confirm this mm, and now and the rest of the shell section of course uh, is, is defined correctly uh, I just have to mm, define boundary conditions again and they have to be redefined because I deleted the previous step uh, so let's specify fixed boundary condition here uh, and of, of course those will be the same boundary conditions so uh, here I constrain uh, everything except for this uh, one in degree of freedom which is uh, actual mm, actual translation uh, but uh, here i will specify prescribed displacement uh, 20 millimeters and uh, this should be sufficient for for the mm, for the analysis uh, and uh, this mm, because of this um, way we define the um, load instead of using direct uh, for force application uh, we make it uh, much easier for the solver to converge because with uh, load control uh, it, it's uh, way harder to achieve convergence uh, and remember that uh, Calculix doesn't uh, support RIGS solver yet, arc length solver, uh, so mm, you have to rely on uh, classic uh, static step and uh, it can be difficult for, for this uh, type of step to converge in nonlinear backlink analysis, uh, so mm, it's, it's better to, to make it uh, easier by uh, applying prescribed displacement instead of force. Uh, Alright, now uh, I just have to uh, modify an output request. Uh, I will change this uh, element output request for field output. I will just add uh, peak uh, st so plastic strains, uh, and I will also add uh, two um, history output requests. Uh, no doubt, what this this type I will choose uh, for the f in this case, uh, and uh, I want to request uh, displacements uh, for uh, this region, so the top edge of the shell. Uh, and also mm, uh, reaction forces, I will select uh, bottom edge and uh, I will specify reaction forces as the variable of, of interest and I will choose only totals so I we will get a sum of for, for the whole uh, edge uh, instead of values for individual nodes um, and uh, this way having those two f history outputs we can create a a plot, uh, basically equilibrium path, um, uh, force versus displacement. Uh, I, as I s like I said b before, mm, I could also use rigid body constraint to apply boundary condition and loads, and then it would be easier because I could just take uh, output from directly from the reference point. But uh, this also has some disadvantages. So mm, in this case, we use the approach with mm, uh, with uh, s taking values from from the edges directly, no, from mm, edge nodes directly. All right, just one more thing uh, because I had to apply the imperfection. Uh, for this purpose, I will choose model tools and uh, update nodal coordinates from fi from file. This is the option that we need in this case. Mm, and here I have to select the file with imperfection. I choose, uh, I click OK, mm, and now you can uh, see those imperfections are barely visible, but uh, you can see that they were applied. If you take a closer look, um, you can see that um, those imperfections were uh, applied correctly to the uh, to the model. Of course, we could measure the, the node coordinates of the nodes and, and make some uh, comparisons uh, or check the contents of the input files, compare the, the mm, coordinates, uh, but mm, it's not necessary because we can see that mm, the imperfections were applied correctly. All right, mm, so now I will submit the analysis and we will check the results once the analysis completes. All right, it took a while, but the results are available now. Uh, here you can see mm, how the analysis was progressing. Uh, you can see that the solver was struggling a bit uh, because of the difficulties I mentioned before. Here you can also mm, check the mm, convergence progress. Uh, and uh, let's uh, check the results. All right, now we have the results. Mm, we can just uh, change the mm, scale factor uh, because the previous one was taken from the mm, linear backlink analysis. And uh, now we can scroll from mm, subsequent uh, increments or frames. I will switch to mm, stresses and uh, select the last um, frame. Uh, you can see here the, mm, the formed shape of the model. Uh, of course, we can also create an animation mm, and see mm, how this model uh, deforms uh, during the whole analysis. And this uh, gives us a mm, view on uh, how the, the model uh, deforms. Mm, and uh, when it comes to the examination of the results, uh, it's not uh, everything that, that we can and should do uh, because uh, for this kind of analysis uh, we are also mm, usually interested in equilibrium paths and uh, that's why we requested this uh, history output. Uh, so we have um, displacement and forces here and uh, what we can do now is, um, for example, let's start with uh, forces. Mm, we have uh, three components. Of course, we are interested in the third component because of the actual direction of the shell. 
Uh, and uh, here we have um, total uh, reaction forces uh, for f taken from all nodes, uh, uh, and of course they change uh, how they change um, during the analysis for all uh, increments uh, up to one, which was the, the analysis uh, time. And uh, what I could do now is mm, select the whole column here and uh, co copy this column. And uh, because plotting it um, was wouldn't be so useful um, if we pl plot just the reaction forces, um, and thus I would just copy this, um, paste this to, to some notebook, for example, um, and then do the same with displacements. Um, if we expand displacements here, you also have three components, uh, but this time there will be more values because um, it wasn't uh, summed for all nodes, so we have uh, val value for each node. And we can select any of them mm, and uh, do the same, so select the whole column. Uh, and this was prescribed displacement. Mm, and uh, here we can copy the contents of this column, uh, paste them into a notebook, uh, and then uh, and then com combine uh, th those two outputs, so forces and displacements, uh, and create a plot. For this purpose, you can use um, some uh, spreadsheet software like LibreOffice Libre Calc, for example. Uh, this is open source uh, software. And uh, here I pasted uh, the contents of mm, of those uh, history outputs that I showed you before, so reaction forces and, and displacements. And here you can see mm, the equilibrium path uh, obtained for this model. Uh, on the x-axis we have displacement uh, up to 20 because that was the, the, the value that we specified um, when we defined the boundary condition. And here we have forces. We can mm, th we can uh, check um, how the forces change during the analysis. So this mm, gives us a of how the buckling uh, behavior progresses and uh, how this model behaves apart from from just looking at the deformed uh, shape here uh, all right mm, that's it for this prepomax tutorial thank you very much for your attention uh, as always feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments have a nice day and see you in the next video